Okay, here is another Lightwave tutorial. Um, you see here I have an object uh, which is a cape for Darth Vader from my upcoming Star Wars fan film. This tutorial is going to focus on how to use dynamics uh, to get cloth uh, to move and behave realistically, uh, react to gravity and react to different objects and stuff. So here, um, setting this object up is very simple. Um, the only thing you have to really do is, is um, remember that you have two op two items okay, that you have to define here. Let's go to the wireframe view. Um, what you have to define is the parts of the object that are going to stay fixed, that are not going to be affected by gravity and dynamics, and the other parts that are going to stay, that are actually going to be affected by dynamics. Actually, you could just get away with defining the fixed parts. But what you have to do is just select some points and go to S for selection set and, and uh, give it a name. Uh, I've already selected some sets here. As you can see, I've got one called collar. Well, I don't think you're going to see it here. Let's bring up the point statistics window and go to collar. And you'll see that the very top part, I've selected these, hit hit the S button, and gone to new and given it a name. And um, we're going to use that in a bit here to tell Lightwave which parts need to stay fixed. Okay, so here is layout, and we already have a scene here with Darth Vader, and he's been animated, and he's moving around with a sword and stuff like that. And as you can see, <clears throat> the cape is is rigid; it's just sitting there. So let's um, bring up the properties. Hit P to bring up properties for this cape, and click on Dynamics. <clears throat> and you'll see I've already added the cloth effects. You go to Dynamic Cloth, <clears throat> and uh, that will add the cloth effects. Double click on this, and it will bring up the options. Now we're just going to do the the very um, basic options here, but uh, basically the only things you really need to get started with dynamics, <clears throat> cloth dynamics, is just to add the cloth effects and to tell it under fix, it'll start out to say none, it'll default to none. Just tell it what you want, what items, what points you want to stay fixed. Otherwise the entire object is going to fall. If you had like a handkerchief falling out of someone's hand, you would select none. But in this case we want the the collar, this area here around his neck, to stay with the uh, the original object. So we are going to select the collar. And uh, I've already gone ahead and, and messed with these. You're going to have to mess with these various parameters over and over and over again to find um, what you want. Um, you know, to get it to look exactly the way you want. There's nothing you can do except trial and error, really. Um, I'll get into collision and stuff like that later. The other thing you might want to to do is go into the Etc tab and give it some gravity. In this case, negative nine meters, uh, nine point two, I think, is is the real gravity uh, setting. I just gave it negative nine because it seemed to work better. And then here under preset, you'll have to, you probably want to select a, a preset um, because the, that will change these items to something other than their default. They'll be much more realistic. Uh, I've already set these, so I'm not going to do that. The last thing you want to remember is if this is going to be a sub patch object, for example, this cape we want it to flow and look nice and billowy. Um, so I've used sub patches, so it will deform very, very nicely. And uh, the thing you have to make sure of is set the subdivision order to last. If you don't do that, it will it will bunch up and look just completely bizarre. You'll get very unpredictable uh, results. And uh, the last thing you want to do to set up is before your animation starts set the end time as you can see I have the end time here starting at negative 200 because you'll see here in a minute uh, when I run the simulation if you set the end time to start at frame 0 with your normal animation start frame then it actually takes a few seconds for the cape to be affected by gravity and for everything to kinda settle so give it several hundred frames uh, to give it time to settle and for all the forces to start interacting with it so that it looks proper. Otherwise it's going to start falling um, it's going to look very unnatural because it's going to start simulating at, at frame zero and at frame zero it's going to be in this compressed kind of state. It's going to look really weird if, if you don't do it like that. Um, the other thing is um, instead of modeling this cape, let's go to the front view. Instead of modeling this cape as it would normally be, where it would drape all the way down to his feet, I've modeled it because th this is actually going to stretch out quite a bit. So you want to probably model things to be much um, 
shorter or, or squashed in you know compared to what they would normally look like so again you'll have to do trial and error and figure out um, and figure out uh, <clears throat> you know how much squashing of the object you have to do to get to look right all right now I'm gonna run the simulation here and hopefully it won't crash because this uh, screen capture software is here I'm gonna move this off the side I'm gonna click calculate I'm gonna move this off to the side so you can see what's going on uh, just when you click calculate it's gonna go through all the frames and as you can see it's starting to uh, drape this stuff it's being affected by gravity um, this box down here is a collision object he's got various collision objects on his body and on his feet that are going to interact with his cloth when um, this simulation is uh, is ready to go so I've given it uh, several frames here to go ahead and uh, get it into a, a solid state a resting state before the an actual animation starts and as you can see down here it'll tell you what's going on and if you need to stop this if the animation uh, simulation looks bad you can hit the control key at any time now the animation has started and you're only seeing like the dynamic objects at this point and as you can see here this like wire cage is actually a, a very slimmed down version of Darth Vader's body that I created specifically to be a uh, specifically to be a collision object so that the cape won't be going through his body and uh, instead of the cape interacting with the full high polygon version of Vader's body I created this very simplified version of his body and attached it to the same bone structure so it moves in the exact same way and uh, that way the, the cape won't go through there I added these extra, see these things that say bounce? These are extra dynamic objects because um, even though I have this collision object, uh, this body collision object, um, I found that the cape was still going through his feet and stuff like that. You have to probably use some extra objects to kind of help out. So now the simulation is done, and as you can see, he's um, anywhere we go, he's, well, I still have to animate a little bit better. His foot is kind of going through there, but um, as you can see where, where these bounce objects go through, um, where they kind of push in there, that gives it enough oomph to get get past the uh, the foot there and actually in from the uh, the camera angle you can't really tell that his, his well you can see it going through there a little bit but use these kind of helper collision objects that you, to animate uh, it's really difficult to to get everything to look perfect um, just normally um, you're gonna really need to add these little helper if you're gonna do something like this like a sword fighter with a flowing cape you're gonna really need to add some extra collision objects that you're gonna have to animate by hand kind of pushing into the mesh uh, when they need to but that's the basics of setting up the dynamics it's actually uh, quite easy to set up it's very difficult to get these um, to get these settings right these cloth settings here is just a lot of trial and error and um, there's no way around that you just have to find out what's right for your scene at the time uh, I hope this helps out um, there will be more dynamics tutorials coming in a second.